how much is this cost to me? Everybody wants to know, and I want to give you the answers. I even made notes. We're going to break this down part by part, going through some of the old videos and doing some more work on today, explaining the cost on everything that we have done, everything that we still need to do, and is it where I wanted to be? So the whole thing started with the F350. It's a 1987 F350 that a subscriber reached out from Gary, Indiana and said, hey, I got this truck, I'm getting rid of it, it's free, it's yours if you want it, it's got a title and everything. And I said, sure, borrowed Dirt Perfect's trailer and we went north. So the truck was free, but it ended up costing me like 150 bucks in fuel to go up there and get it. Now the frame itself on this truck was pretty shot. The cab itself was, was pretty shot as well, although there were a lot of good interior components like the dash and some other trim components that we're gonna end up using. But the big ticket item is it had this Ford 460 7.5 liter V8 with the four speed transmission on the back, which is kind of known to be bulletproof transmission after doing some research. So that should serve us well. And it had this dump bed on the back and the skin of this dump bed, the sides, the back, the front are decent, but the main supports have seen better days. So we're gonna have to either cut all this off and build a whole new floor. And we're gonna have to kind of figure that out soon because it's coming to the project. But overall, first truck part, 150 bucks, including the gas. Now off of that truck, I was able to sell the rear axles, which are just the regular F350 one ton axles, the front axle, the wheels, and a couple other odds and ends. And I sold those parts for 400 bucks. And then we ended up with this rig, which was a 1990 Super Duty. So heavier frame, heavier axles. Now it didn't have the rear axle on it, but the cab was in a little bit better shape. Front axles and wheels were solid and the frame was very solid, which was the main thing I was after. I took the 400 bucks I made from parts and I bought this from a fella about 30 minutes away for 400 bucks and it had a title. So that worked out perfect. Hi, how you doing? And then came the third parts truck. This was the most expensive purchase out of all in the whole project, 2,500 bucks for this, but it gave us quite a bit. We got a Ford Super Duty 10 lug axle, which is an 11,000 pound axle. Came with all the suspension components, brackets, everything we need, and the drive line. But that drive shaft is still at the drive line shop, getting extended the way it needs to be. We also got a really good fuel tank off of it as well, and a tremendous amount of interior trim components. And even though that was an expensive purchase, it's gonna work out okay. Because it had this wrecker bed on it, which has a Vulcan lift and a Century Boom on there with double Ramsey wrenches. That is sold, it's getting picked up tomorrow from a fella in Tennessee. It had a ZF5 transmission with the parking brake and a PTO pump on the transmission as well. That is sold. Uh, two different things going two different places, but that is also sold. And all of that is getting out of here for 2,500 bucks, which means this truck, free, free axle, free drive line, free tank, and free trim components on the inside. And we still have the rest of the truck to either part out or sell as a whole, which reminds me, if you need a 7.3, which turns over freely with a socket and ratchet off the bottom, I don't know if it runs because we didn't really put much effort into it, but it is free. The, the engine's free, the cost isn't free. With a super sick bumper, still has the high pressure fuel pump on it. Again, don't know if it works, but it's there. And uh, some other random components. If you need that, it's for sale. Email me at captaincleman one gmail.com. I'll make you a heck of a deal on it. Uh, the exception is the wheels. Those aren't going with it. Those are staying with me. One for me, one for Clint. That reminds me though, I put some hoses on here to try to test the bed. And I ended up blowing one of the hoses I was using to test it and couldn't test it fully. But the guy that's getting it rebuilds wreckers, so he's not too worried about it. Here, I put some hoses with quick connects on the end so I could somewhat test the bed. I need to get my end of those components off of there. That includes a return line I stole off another piece of equipment. Oh, why did I tighten it so much? These things are pretty handy. I had somebody ask if I made it. No, I'll put a link in the description to Amazon. Out of partnership or affiliation, I bought this because I saw it on TikTok. It's like, that looks handy. It has proven to be handy. Let that drain a little bit. Pull her out here in a second. 
on the fuel system, we put a new pump in, which was 60 bucks. This quick connect piece here, which was like 50 bucks. This quick connect piece, which was $10. And then we've got some fuel line. I ended up going with this Evil Energy. It had a ton of reviews. I did some research on it. It's supposed to be a very nice high-end fuel line. It's got two layers of rubber and braided reinforcement on it as well. And they did come with hose clamps. But anytime I get the chance to buy an assortment of something, I jump right on it. Tape. These are three or four stainless steel mini fuel line injection clamps. And what I like about this style over a traditional hose clamp, I feel like they hold better. I feel like they don't give out as quickly. And they're stainless. So at this point, I'm hoping 10 foot was enough. Uh-oh. It's not. While we're at it, let's see if we can go ahead and get these hard lines finagled back on here. I need to torque down these valve covers next. We got stainless steel. If a fella uses stainless steel, which this came from an automotive company made for this specific engine, it has the specific torque specs for the stainless steel. It also tells you right here to use blue Loctite or anti-seize because of the whole galvanic corrosion thing, which we used anti-seize on all of these and those up there anywhere we've used stainless steel. We've got the anti-seize on them. And we were following those torque specs. We're also going to go ahead and do all new spark plugs as long as they all come out. Terrifying. Let's see what they look like. They honestly don't look too terrible. But I'm putting new ones in so that way I know what I've got. These should be good to go, but I'm just going to check them as we go here. Wonderful. And I know a lot of people put anti seize on spark plugs. Good for you, man. You know, I think that's, I think that's great. I'm, I'm excited for you. And believe it or not, I'm actually going to torque these. There is a torque spec in the manual for it. I figure might as well. Newton meters, foot pounds. I also have brand new exhaust studs to put all the way around. As far as where some of my stuff comes from, some of it's rock auto. Not a lot though, honestly. Their prices are great, but you pay $20,000 for shipping every time. I'm guaranteed if you need four parts, it's coming from four different warehouses. Some of it's Amazon, a lot of it is eBay, and a lot of it is a local mom and pop shop called Schaefer and Paul in here in town. Well. About 30 minutes away anyway. These boxes all the same. Awesome. These boxes say exhaust flange bolts. That's not what we want. Also not what it was listed as. And we'll go ahead and put these plug wires back where they belong. The flies today are wild. As opposed to domesticated? I don't know. But uh, I took pictures. I labeled them. Mm-hmm. Now well, that's something. And this bracket goes somewhere. I'm confident of it. Why do I always take pictures from down low? Makes the engine look bigger, I guess. I got it. I got it. Everything's fine. It goes right here. What? No. This thing's been used as a breaker bar a few too many times. Speaking of Clint, Clint wants some more things off this truck. What's holding this on? Anything crazy? Oh, excuse me. Come off the handle. Thank you. I did have a fella say that um, the wiring harness on that 87 with a few modifications can't accept this for fancy windows like that. But I will say this harness appears to have some modifications already. And I honestly don't know if I want to mess with it. Gosh, but the doors are just mint. Hey, they're in good shape. You know, I'm going to take them off. We're going to use them regardless. Now, I'm going to need you guys to catch this when it comes off. 
I don't know if you have the impact ratchets, but they're super handy. It's good for them. Now what? Where's the plant? Okay. Why is that door so heavy? Might be easier just to disconnect it. Honestly. There it goes. All right. Ouch. Ten. Oh, yeah. Now, one, two from that side. Oh, cool. So here's what we just unbolted. All right, that's what attaches the back of the pedal assembly. So somewhere below there, that makes sense. The master cylinder for the clutch, they're right there, right? There. Get on there. No worries, Clint. I watched a ton of Super Duty videos before I started disassembling this. Yeah, they were your videos, so that's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. The other thing Clint wants off here, and I want one too, is one of these tin lug wheels. They're kind of hard to come by, and if you do have to get one, they're kind of pricey. That'll give him a spare. Since we're missing some, they probably had this off at some point. Get them broke loose, then we'll get it up in there. Three quarter socket, but I got a Half inch to three quarter adapter. Doesn't have enough power to break them loose, but we can at least run them off that way. I will be keeping the simulator covers. Oh. Honestly, so here's where I'm at on this truck. Aside from, I just spotted that bracket. I want to snag that bracket. But I don't think I need anything else off this. I got all the trim pieces I need. Uh, those seat belts aren't any good either. I'm gonna to have to order some more. There's nothing here that can swap over to what I'm doing, aside from the doors. The fenders and the front clip and hood could go over there, but you gotta switch out some more stuff. And honestly, I'm kind of a fan of the old beat up panels. I mean, we're gonna paint these up just to kind of keep the rust under control as far as that goes. I mean, let's face it, we're going to be running through the woods with this anyway, smacking branches and stuff. No point in having a perfectly good straight fender anyway. Just something to keep the engine inside. The bumper is cool, there's no doubt about it, but I think one of the worst decisions a fella can make is put a low-profile bumper on a dump truck. That's a really good way to get stuck. I've seen it happen to some people that have bumpers like that, so that's just going to stay on the truck, because hopefully somebody buys the whole thing for the bumper. Let's try to finish this out with getting this gone and getting that tow bed gone, you know? Then we'll know for sure where we stand. Let's go ahead and get this rigged up and ready to go. I've been getting a bunch of parts rounded up for the cab assembly, making sure I got everything I need. And I was just thinking something, before we get rid of that parts truck, so this is off the F-350, it's the vacuum assist. 
this was off that green truck that we've been working off the frame. It was on there. And that's what I want to use. It's the Hydro Boost, Power Assist, wherever you want to say. It uses the power from the hydraulic steering pump to assist with the braking, which is what we want, especially with those rear disc brakes. It'll give us more braking power. The only catch here is the hose that went to its pump is a different size than the hose that goes to my pump. Now, I can take these two hoses to a hydraulic shop. This fitting on this end is different as well. I can take these to a hydraulic shop and say I need this to go into this, and they can make it up for me. Uh, I'm going to check on this parts truck. Its connection from its pump to here isn't the same because we might be able to make that work. If not, it'll be to a hydraulic shop to make sure we get it right. I mean, call me crazy. But that looks like the same dang thing to me. We'll still keep the other two. If we got to take it to a hydraulic shop, we got to take it to a hydraulic shop. But I think that should, uh, that should have us. Look at that. We time travel a little bit, and that a neat trick. And we got things like these cab mounts. They're $118. There's a spoiler alert for the next video where we try to get this thing running. And the front core support, which I spent $200 on, which saved me a ton of time though and was worth it. And of course, a new big old battery, $225. And some other miscellaneous things sprinkled in there. I can't let you see too much now. The other thing we got ordered is window gaskets and all the gaskets for the triangle windows, for these windows, the weather stripping around the door, and there should be some for all of these sections as well. There's no point in trying to fix all the rust on this thing if we're still gonna have it leaking. And eventually I'd love to have a place that I can park it undercover, but that's not gonna be for a while. So that's worth putting the money into as well. Then of course, there's the things that we still have to spend money on. Like we gotta do this rear drive shaft, which includes new U-joint, new U-joint and shortening that up. Probably gonna be around 400 bucks for that. Maybe a little bit less, but we'll just be conservative with that guess. We also have some things up here. And when I say the front end, I mean the functioning lights. That's important to me. I want good lights. I want that stuff to work. And speaking of lights, the bed is also going to need all new LED lights on the back, on the side, and markers and things like that. So between the wiring, the lights, and all of that, that's probably going to be another 500 bucks. Speaking of that bed, what I want for this truck is a 10-foot bed. 10 foot's right about there. Now I got two options. We can either take that eight foot bed, also my rag drying and cleaning station. All of this has to be cut off and replaced anyway. Make a slice mark, add two feet onto it, and build our own, paint it with custom lights. And when I price the steel and everything for that, that's around two grand. Or I could try to find a somewhat decent used bed. It seems like any of the decent beds are gonna be around $3,500, and even those Look like they're still gonna need some work. So I still don't know what I wanna do with that. Do I wanna spend the time to build it exactly the way I want it or buy one and hope it's exactly what I want and spend a little bit more? It's kind of a toss up, honestly, and it's kind of a time frame thing. And then there's no denying there's gonna be some more hidden expenses, all the fluids and the gear oil and the oil change and the coolant and everything we have to do that. There's gonna be some other odds and ends pop up. We'll just add an extra grand on for those random surprises that are gonna show up, maybe something in the exhaust as well. And we talked about the bed lining on the inside, but we also had the kill mat, which was around 60 bucks. This sound deadening, which is around 60 bucks, and the vinyl floor that's gonna go in here, which was 150 bucks. I don't know if I wanna include this on the build or not, but I think I will just for the reality sake of it. There's about 300 bucks worth of tools that I ended up having to get for some things that I didn't have, which is fine. They're tools that I'll use for something else. That's more of an investment in the long run, which I suppose this truck is as well. We do have one coat of the enamel up top and we're painting the rest of it. We talked about it, we're doing Ford Ag Blue down low and Ford Ag Gray up top. That's how we're doing the paint scheme like an old Ford Ag tractor because I think trucks are supposed to be a utilitarian thing, not a comfort thing, even though we did put a little time in the sound deadening. She's gonna look like an Ag tractor. Trucks should be utilitarian. They shouldn't be $80,000 of luxury. I personally blame Joe Diffie. It's a wild theory I have, but I'm fairly confident it's because of Joe Diffie that truck prices are the way they are nowadays. So to be realistic with it, we're going to add just a big old number on there. We'll just round it up and say seven grand is a realistic number. If we build our own bed, 8,500, probably nine if we buy a bed because we'll still have to do some work to a bed. So anywhere from seven grand to nine grand is where we're gonna end up on this rig. And if anybody does perusing on Facebook Marketplace, you know you can buy a running, dumping truck for about that cost. But 
Let's take a gander at some of them. So here's one 1988 GMC truck, $3,500. Look at that. Look at all this information they provide. 1988 new rear tires, rebuilt transmission. Wow, that's a whole lot of information. However, there appears to be something going on right in this region. Not sure what's happening there. And with no information on the engine and no interior pictures, it's just one picture. I'm going to assume there's quite a bit more money that would have to be put in that truck to be what we have now. Here's another 1994 F800. Runs, drives, stops, and dumps. Those are all crucial things. 5,000 firm. It's got a Cummins in it. Doesn't look too bad. But we've got these older star wheels, which I'm just not a huge fan of. Would appear that this was parked too close to the sun for just a little bit. Bed actually doesn't look too bad. As far as that goes, interior is a little rough, and it looks like we've got the old ventilated floor pans, as far as that goes. Some switches hanging down under the dash, that's always a good sign. I mean, it is what it is, it's a good old farm truck, and if this thing was going to stay on the property, and only stay on the property, and never leave and go down the highway, that wouldn't be a terrible option. But we do plan on being on the highway a little bit. This one I've actually got on my save list because of the bed. The bed looks like it's in relatively decent shape and for the price of it it wouldn't be too bad for the bed i mean it's got some peel and paint but i don't see any major rust holes on the bed they also don't have a tremendous amount of pictures i might buy that one just for the bed who's who's to know they maybe get her running and sell the rest so here's one's closer to that seven thousand dollar range and honestly not a bad looking rig it's pretty clean overall the bed looks in really good shape the cab looks in good shape it's got the aluminum wheels on it looks good here's the biggest catch on this one Rear tires. So we'd have to be putting new tires on that to make it something. But really, overall, we'd kind of be around the same price range. But I don't know anything about the engine. I don't know anything about the cab. I don't know anything about anything else. So it's kind of a crapshoot on something like that. This is probably the most comparable truck to what we're dealing with. The big difference on this is it's got the short wheelbase versus the longer wheelbase that I have. So it's only got an 8-foot dump bed on it, and I definitely want that 10-foot bed. But sometimes they're going to be hauling stone, which I don't really need the 10-foot bed for that. But sometimes they're going to be hauling wood chips or mulch or manure from farms that we can use in our compost, or we might be hauling off tree debris or trash, something that's not heavy per yard, and I need that extra bed space for it. But you can see they're asking 6000 for this one. So I don't think we're going to be too far off where we're at on the price range that we talked about. So could we buy a single axle dump truck in that price range? Absolutely, there are definitely some options out there, but they're not gonna be what we have now, which is quite a bit of new parts and components, and I'm definitely not gonna know what I'm getting. So even though we could buy something like this, 7500 GMC dump truck with absolutely no information listed, also pay very close attention to the bed in this picture. So we could definitely find a truck in that price range, but we don't know what kind of can of worms we're going to be opening up. With what we have now, we know exactly what we've got. What we're getting is a completely cleaned up frame, new suspension, new components like cab mounts, new floor, new sound deadening, new vinyl, new parts in the engine compartment, new lighting. We're getting a bunch of new parts with that. There's still the used on here, and there's still some variables like how are the brakes going to be once we get this thing up and running, and a big one that we haven't checked yet. What's that rear end actually look like in that thing? We are going to take that cover off and go through it and put some fresh oil and that kind of thing in there. Completely new drive line, new shafts, new U-joints and all of that. New fuel pump, new fuel lines. So although we could buy a used truck for that price that runs, dumps and works, what we've got for that price is a whole lot of new. There's still some variables. We talked about it, but overall, shouldn't be too bad of a rig for us. The other thing worth mentioning is size-wise, this is the perfect setup for us because with a good panel hitch, I should have plenty of gearing and enough power with a good trailer to pull the 555. And the 555 is big enough to pull this if I get stuck. If I had a tandem, I don't think I could get it out with that. Not to mention I'd have a whole nother axle and set of tires I'd have to worry about maintaining as well. Size-wise, this is perfect for what we're looking for. So there you have it. If you're looking at doing something like this, there's the realistic numbers of the cost. The only thing I didn't take into consideration is my time, which it has been several months. And although people will say, yeah, you get paid for the content, which is true, making content or not, I would still take the time to build this because if I'm not making content, what else would I be doing? Not sitting around, that's for sure. Hope you guys liked the video. Hope you like the channel. And I hope I see you.